there appeared to be at the time one homogenous product uh, for corporate property insurance. So we thought that we might be able to offer something new. So in 1999, in a, in a little office uh, in uh, the Santon area, we got together, um, dreamt up a name, um, went out and got some solicitors and accountants and set up a bank, a bank account and started. And that's how we started to trade. And it was really at the time, we, only, we didn't have uh, big ideas about how, certainly we didn't think we'd grow to the extent we've grown now, but South Africa is an entrepreneurial environment. Mm. And it gives you, uh, all entrepreneurs mm. in all industries the opportunity to trade in a way that you can't necessarily trade in a lot of countries outside of Africa. Um, and uh, we thought we could add some value, and it, it would appear that we did. And the mining industry is one particular area where worldwide there have been some major, major losses uh, that have certainly worried reinsurers and insurers alike. Um, not necessarily uh, within the African continent, but certainly in recent times in Australia and certainly yeah. in recent times in South America, there have been some radical losses. And as a consequence of that, reinsurers have been reluctant to offer too much capacity to the insurers. Um, now for us, that re re uh, represented a marvellous opportunity because whereas in many, many insurance sectors you might have 10, 15, 20 competitors, in the mining sector there aren't that many people that are comfortable with with the risk and understanding the risk and understanding the pitfalls of the risk when it goes wrong. So areas like mining, railways would be uh, certainly another, mm -hmm. are areas where we think we um, excel. Areas that have a lot of African exposures are areas that we think we excel at because we've got an understanding of where the log jams could happen at the point of a loss after a fire explosion, access to equipment, access to capital, access to information. It is a natural phenomenon in any industry that where profits are hit, they're looking to cut expenses. That's just a, that again, is yeah. would be a direct yeah. correlation. And if somebody's profits are hit and they're saving expenses, one of the easier way to save expenses is look at the areas where it's perceived at the time you're not getting real value. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you've got a mining account or a railway account or a steel account or whatever that hasn't had a claim for five years, mm. it would be easy for that board of directors to think, do we really need to spend as much yeah. on risk management? Because yeah. you only really see the value of it. One of the problems with this is it's not immediately tangible. So exactly. you only see the real value after a massive event. The, the magic thing about the rest of Africa is that there, there is so much opportunity and there is so much wealth, uh, there is so much potential. Uh, and certainly with, as Emerald, we kind of changed the framework a little bit about five years ago when we started insuring in Africa uh, and, and changing our reinsurance arrangements so that we could travel into Africa and insure those places. So what you're finding now is many Many originally South African companies that are now quoted on stock exchanges around the world um, who have um, knowledge of South Africa, some of their people are working there in senior positions, are beginning to move into the rest of Africa. Um, a lot of uh, the stuff that goes on in Africa is via South Africa. As you say, they use South Africa as, as a gateway. I mean, we're brutally aware that the Chinese have invested a load of money yeah. onto the African continent. Yeah. And a lot of it is flooding through, through South Africa. Yeah. It would take a real degree, uh, they'd have some real resolve for an international carrier who wasn't at least in South Africa already to start trading in Africa. And also the other thing is just logistically we're close, we're two hours away from Malawi. Yeah. Um, and I keep using Malawi as an example just because yeah. I was there last week. Yeah. But you know, right now we're planning a, a trip to Zambia, we're planning a trip to Ghana, and we can do that pretty much in the same way we plan a trip to Cape Town. If you want to talk at a high level, um, I want to be less reliant on South African business into the future. So at the moment, I'll give you an idea, roughly 15% of our income is in Africa and 85% in South Africa. I would love to get to the stage, and I haven't um, bothered myself with a, a, a time restriction or, or whatever, I'd love to get to the stage where a far greater amount comes from Africa. Uh, not that I want to lose my South African business to do it, yeah. I, want to get, I want to maintain my South African business, but I want to grow the African book so that uh, I'd love one day to say we're 50-50 between Africa and South Africa. For more videos, please visit www.voicesofsouthafrica.com.